we can cut to us. Oh, never mind. Oh, all right. So uh, we're just about to start that match in the feature round, but I uh, just wanted to introduce I'm here with uh, Kenny Pena, who is our uh, U.S. national champion and Canadian national champion. And uh, he, he's going to guest commentate with us for this, uh, for this match, uh, which is great, although that does mean a little bit of bad news. That means you're not playing at one of those tables. So you did make it to uh, top eight. Uh, just tell us what, quickly what your team was uh, that you uh, had. Yeah, um, I was running Phantom X. Uh, he was possessed by Proselyte, the entity. Um, I was also playing uh, Bill, Agent of AIM, and everyone's favorite character, Felix Faust. All right, um, yeah, he's been making a show in yeah, here. Yeah, uh, an indigo battery with a few constructs. Um, that was the build. Okay, and uh, so that was uh, that brought you up to top eight. So yep. congratulations on that. Thank you. Um, but uh, we are gonna we're down to top four now, mm -hmm. and uh, we're gonna we're gonna switch over to the map. They're just getting started here. So some uh, some interesting team builds, uh, and if we can uh, switch over to see. Uh, We've got uh, uh, Kenji uh, versus uh, Phil here in uh, one of the top four matches. And uh, looking at the, uh, the, the, the Sentinel. All right, this is wow. uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> you, you jumped into an exciting match that started off uh, pretty strong here. So uh, I, I know you are on the team with, uh, with Kenji. So Correct. can you talk us through his team uh, and, uh, and what he's got? All right. Um, so he is um, has an animal theme team, as you can see. That's a red battery, so a lot of poison. Um, his team is Alyosha Craven at 70 points of prime. Um, got a rocket raccoon from Guardians of the Galaxy set at 80 points. Uh, he's known for re-rolling rolls normally that can't be re-rolled. 25 point lockjaw from the Fast Forces and Human set, and we also got the um, LE Wolfsbane, the monthly LE Wolfsbane as well. Uh, at 64 points so and three ID cards so he's taking advantage of the new function that was just released or um, presented from Avengers Assemble his ID cards are mm, Manifold, Triathlon and Nova alright so we're seeing the uh, the Nova uh, card there this is the one that he's got uh, assigned to the ID card there's that Rocket Raccoon uh, these are uh, these cards have been uh, loaded up. They're gonna they're gonna scroll through every. I think it's 20 seconds is the scroll. So we'll just get a, a little snippet there to be able to check out that what their special powers are, uh, even their dial and their tempo. Um, but uh, checking out this match here, uh, he is uh, he is matched up against uh, Phil. Uh, Phil, we actually saw in one of the featured matches yesterday. And uh, if we can uh, switch over to Phil's uh, Phil's cards there. Mm -hmm. uh, that was uh, oh that was uh, Phil. So uh, we actually don't have because it doesn't fit within the uh, <laughs> the parameters here. The only thing that we've got is Phil has a spider bot, but he is playing the uh, the uh, out, uh, sentinel there, and uh, we can see uh, can switch back to uh, to Kenny's team. The spider bot's the only one we got showing for uh, for Phil's team there, but. Uh, the Sentinel has the uh, attack and defense mode, and uh, you can see he is going on the offensive very early, moving right up across the board, right up to Kenji's starting area. So putting the pressure on Kenji right out of the gate. Mm -hmm. He must have rolled um, move, um, uh, Colossal Salmon. Um, I know the, there's a second dial for that Sentinel, uh, and I guess he must have rolled multi-attack and use both actions to maybe move an attack blow up the wall and then the second one a normal move action just to say hi to the animals yeah <laughs> getting right in there so a lot of poison uh, Phoenix Force and the red battery so this should end somewhat fast if everyone's going to be all based yeah passive damage will make uh, make for a quick game certainly I'm guessing with getting up that close that uh, that Phil's thought was to try to limit Kenji's mobility a little bit in terms of being able to position and just make him stay as close as possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I mean, Lockjaw does have plasticity. Uh, that might help escape. But that's the one character he wants to face, so I'm not sure what else he could do from there, so whether stay there or not. Yeah, tough choice for uh, Kenji to stay and duke it out or 
you know, do you do you take those actions to move away? Well, it looks like he's putting up the fight there. Mm -hmm. So Wolf Spain, uh, who's from our camera angle, is kind of under the hand of the Sentinel there. But that is uh, Wolf Spain. And uh, looks like a successful attack there. Rolls the double fours. So that roll was pro most likely uh, the magic shards on the Sentinel. So there's mystics damage, but Wolf Spain has that neat little ability where anytime she takes damage, uh, she has to roll her die to see if, uh, if she rolls a one or two, takes damage normally. Pretty much three to six, she rolls to a different click. So that extra roll there was to see if um, she was living or not. I think Uliagin just pushed and died, or got KO'd rather. That's a lot of poison from Sentinel going yeah, on. Yeah, right that's uh, and Wolf Spain did roll out of it. So with that double base and poison, he's got a pretty wide threat range with that to be able to have. Yeah, covers a, a lot, lot of adjacent squares. Exactly. Wolf Spain might be the only one that presents a problem, but. I can't imagine it. At some point, you, you can't roll three through six all the time. It's. We'll see how long it lasts. Oof. Wow. That's Here's the same roll there. Rolls the Obi-Wan. May the fours be with you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, as you said, uh, if we can pull up uh, Rocket Raccoon's card off Kenji's team, he uh, he does have an ability. Uh, it's going to cycle through, so it'll take a second. But he does have a uh, uh, an ability that allows you to reroll rolls, uh, and it's uh, not quite probability control. Uh, so it does the way it's uh, worded and its effect is it will allow you to roll rolls on uh, your opponent's yeah. team. Uh, uh, differently, it's that uh, tactical genius supreme power there. Once per turn, when he's within range of line of fire, character rolls made, you're going to ignore the roll. So the timing is different on that one. He can choose rolls uh, even when it's the opponent's team or his own uh, or on his team turn. Yeah. Uh, unlike uh, probability control, it, it's worded in a way where it just matters what role that it, it, it's not particular about the role so normally you can't use probability control for shape change super senses and things like that and rocket raccoon 
um, his ability um, actually allows you to do that. So it's very useful for certain situations um, if you combo with the right uh, characters. Yeah, and it looks like uh, uh, Phil saw that as a threat there because uh, we don't see Rocket Raccoon, Raccoon on anymore. the table. So he must have gone right after a gun in for Rocket Raccoon to get get that reroll roll and, uh, out of the way. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting that they uh, chose, uh, this is one of the, the brand new maps, uh, Arcades Arena. So it uh, hasn't, seen, uh, hasn't seen much table time uh, since it just recently came out. Uh, so uh, I'm kind of surprised that uh, the uh, map selection here for something so brand new, but... Yeah, it's it's a good map. It's wide, as you can see, it's wide open. So you know those characters who who like to TK a lot or have a lot of range. It's other than that, as you can see, that little cluster of uh, indoor terrain. It's it's pretty easy to maneuver, get the line of fire that you may need. Um, also, in this case, I guess for the Sentinel, I'm not sure who won map roll, but I'm assuming Phil did and. Um, there's nothing in the way, no blocking terrain, so there's not yeah, a, not just walls for him to just dance over all the way from one side to the other. Yeah, I, uh, it didn't slow him down, certainly. He was able to get right across the board right away. It's very intimidating, a 250-point piece like that with massive attack numbers. And one turn, he's, he's knocking on your door saying hi. So it looks like uh, Alyosha came out of hiding. Yeah, he was tucked behind Lockjaw there, but he's uh, he's going to charge around to the side there, um, make an attack against the Sentinel, mm -hmm. and uh, now it's a six. Um, I'm assuming that was some sort of super sense or impervious roll. Impervious, I I I, I believe, and uh, unfortunately. He, that attack did not stick, unfortunately no. for Kenji, but fortunately for Phil. Yes. So now Alyosha is exposed. Let's see what uh, Kenji does. Rolls a three on that attack. That won't do it. You know. Um, and uh, looks like that was a push. It was a push. Fortunately, Wolf Swain doesn't really. She just gets to re-roll again and see where she lands. That's the poison from Sentinel now. Yep, cycling through the poison damage at the beginning of Phil's turn. So that's not a second Sentinel. That's just uh, the defense style, or uh, uh, other words, the uh, the attack dial that comes along with the Sentinel that's currently in play. I think Phil just um, playfully just put the other Sentinel on there for intimidation factor on the sideline. Yeah, it is a uh, switch clicks figure, so you can switch back and forth uh, the bases when it's on attack mode or defense mode. But uh, yeah, as uh, Kenny was pointing out here, he must have a, a second Sentinel in his collection, so he's he just has it uh, 
on the additional base. Looks like Sentinel just took a running shot. Not no longer base with the animals. Roll to five, which is normally a low roll, but Sentinel normally packs very high attack numbers, so I would not be surprised if that was a hit of some sorts. And there you go. Yeah, I think Kenny was uh, considering a theme team probability for that, but as you say, when the attack attack values are high enough, you kind of do the math in your head of what's the chances of, of him still missing on that. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, and that, no, I thought he was clicking Alyosha, but it looks like he's off the map, so one more animal down. There's a second movement, so he must have landed on multi-attack once again. And pretty long range for the Sentinel, so he's he's got that, that long threat area and is uh, taking a shot. Uh, Kenji uh, Wolfsbane well, survives, barely rolling uh, a three. Yep. Uh, and uh, I believe a theme team probability from Lockjaw on that one. sure what that token is for. I'm, I'm realizing it's an animal theme team, which is a, a generic keyword, so I think theme team probs only come from um, name keywords, non generic oh, keywords. Oh, yes. So it's a little interesting how that token got placed on Lockjaw. like Lockjaw's taxiing Wolfsbane, placing back next to, uh, adjacent to the Sentinel. Taking a push for it. Yeah, on one hand, Kenji's team is meant to stay up close, but uh, when you're facing a team that is packing poison, that can be dangerous. Yeah, it's you know, his own strategy against him, I guess. Uh, Phil moved in to get get some quick poisons and attacks in, and then is uh, backing off. And now that's forcing Kenji to chase him down. Yep. It is, uh, down to two animals. So Phil definitely has a point lead. He lost a ten point spider bot. He definitely has way more than that. Phil's going to continue backing away, mm -hmm. try to keep out of Kenji's threat range. He's definitely taking advantage of that Colossal Stamina. Uh, Sentinel's got a very deep dial, so he, I'm sure he knows. And took out the Lockjaw. Makes it that much harder uh, for Wolfsbane to get around. And no. that's a bad roll for Wolfsbane. That is the roll you don't want to see. Yeah, and we saw the handshake there and uh, the congratulations. So Kenji uh, Kenji calls it, and that is that is game. That so is Phil game. Uh, Phil will take that one and advance on to the final match. Second year in a row for Phil. Second year uh, at the finals. So very congratulations to him. And as we see in uh, every game, there's always the uh, after-game talk between yes. players of uh, of what happened in the game, sort of the going over, it's going over the roles, going over the strategy, uh, going over what you could have done, should have done, yeah. If this happened, yeah, 
Yeah. It's not a hero clicks game unless you do that. If you walk away after a loss or a win and don't speak to the other person, you know, you're not you're not doing it right. Yeah. You have yeah. to have that talk. And it's always interesting to compare notes about, you know, oh, I thought you were going to do this. Mm -hmm. I wasn't sure um, to kind of to kind of understand what the other player was thinking. So, well, we're uh, we're going to take a pause.